<laughs> How big should it be? This? Okay, so um, today I will be talking about Git internals. Um, basically, uh, the data structures that you see within Git. Um, so, the Git is a very powerful tool. It allows you to do a lot of funny things like uh, rewriting history. So, um, in order to do all these advanced things, you, you need to first understand how Git stores everything. And so, um, Git, here's an example repo. And uh, if you see the directory listing, there's a .git where everything is. So, everything is an object. Um, okay, uh, let's look at the refs. Okay, so you see here in .git slash ref slash heads, this is all your list of branches. Each one is a plain text file that just gives you a commit hash. If you take this and oops, do git show, you can see your commit. Can you scroll up a bit? Your headings. Oh, uh, yeah. Hang on. Let me. Uh, hmm. Uh, oops. I just mirror the screen. Okay, bye. I forgot to click keep this configuration just now, so it reset. Okay, um, so um, like I mentioned, everything is a um, it is an object. So first of all, let's look at the tree. I mean the commit tree. It, it's just a quite a simple tree. Uh, I mean a, quite quite a simple history. Just three commits. Most of them are empty. And so, um, the first thing is that, uh, let, let me draw, where's the, where's the pen? Um, don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I so, in Git history, um, basically uh, the branch always refers to the latest comment in the branch. It's just a sort of symbolic link that points to it. And each comment will have a reference to 
other commits, and this brings you to your entire uh, history chain. So, if you look in this commit, um, this one over here, it show. Uh, oh yeah, th this is the first com. I mean, the latest commit, and you can do git cat file dash p. Yeah, so over here, this is what's internally inside the object for the main, com I mean, the, the, the head commit. And uh, you, you see a few lines. One is tree. Tree is, a tree in Git is a directory. The parent is the parent <laughs> commit. And so you see this, the first eight um, characters in this are the same as these eight characters and the author and committer are here uh, and then you have your log message so all these things uh, put together in some kind of binary format and then hashed give you the uh, hashed using sha1 sum uh, gives you your commit id so all these objects in git they're, they're hashes of their contents, which means that um, when you change anything, the commit hash changes. So, if we evaluate, I mean, if we examine the tree, oops, get cat p, this a tree, then you see that there are blobs. Can't see this. Okay. Oops. okay, so if you examine this tree, you see that there are three blobs, and these are actually your files. So we have commits, trees, and blobs. Trees can contain trees which are other directories, and trees can contain blobs which are files. And each of these are the contents of your file. You, you notice that file 1 and file 2 have the same hash. And the reason for this is because both file 1 and file 2 are empty. This hash is the magic uh, hash for empty file. And if I were to um, say copy this file, see cat file tree, this is the contents of, cat, uh, of file tree. If, if I were to copy file tree into file 4, Um, you see that we now have the same hash for file 3 and file 4. This is because the hash of a file of a blob only, uh, I mean, is only determined by its contents. Anything, any file that has the same contents will get the same hash. Does it mean that the only one copy is stored instead of two? Yes, only one copy of files are stored. If you have a hundred copies of the same file in the same Git repository, only one copy is stored. Mm -hmm. And all of these are referred to by the same hash. Won't you have collisions at some point? Sorry? <coughs> Won't you have collisions at some point? If you uh, have yeah, eventually one day there, there will be collisions but uh, across all the different Git rep repositories out there, but so far... There's a conspiracy theory that that's, uh, that's the purpose Yeah, <laughs> people say that yeah, it, it's a rainbow tables generating device. Yeah, do you oh. think GitHub uses this to also reduce the storage needs or duplicate the process? Possibly, yeah. This, this thing lends itself very well to uh, to call it, I mean, um, to deduplication, right? Because of this. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fox especially. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so we have blobs, and yeah, yeah you, you see there are. Sorry, talking about collisions in the Git uh, SCF website, ah. they have this thing that the chances of collision is uh, lower than the chance of all the developers in your team being attacked by wolves. 
<laughs> wow. Okay. Books, yes. All right. Probably not the way we All right. But the thing is, um, they still have planned for the eventual collision thing. So Git has some leeway for upgrading everything to SHA-256, which, I, I don't know, I, I think it makes it a, a lot harder to collide. So, uh, but that also means that you get a really huge hash for everything. Right? So, yeah, it, inside, uh, all right. it, inside this tree, right, you, you see that there are one, two, three, four, four columns. This is the hash of your file, this is the type, and this is the, what do you call it? I mean, this is the permission. So 644 means that um, it's, it's Unix permissions. Um, it's basically, actually Git doesn't really store the difference, uh, store the actual permissions. It only stores the presence of the execute bit. So if you have an execute bit, then it becomes 755 instead. Um, so it's compatible with Windows? Hmm? Is that how it becomes compatible with Windows? Uh, no. The Windows has... Windows and uh, HFS on Mac have this issue where um, you can have... I mean, files are case insensitive. So if you have one file called capital blah and uh, one file called... Uh, I mean, one file called uh, lowercase blah, in the same directory, um, it's a different file on Linux, and Git will track it as a different file. But in Mac and in Windows, it's the same file. When you try and check out your directory, it starts overwriting it with the contents of each other, and it gets very fun. So, if you want to troll your Windows using friends, this is what you do. <laughs> oh, Mac using friends. Yes, and Mac using friends. Yeah, I'm looking at you. <laughs> so um, right, so I've covered trees and blobs and oh uh, yeah. So like I mentioned, everything is hashed. So if I have an identical tree that looks the same as this, I think it should have the same hash. So if I say make their blah. Um, Okay, the cat file HP. So, can I expand this a bit? It's a bit small. So, just now we saw that um, our commit had a tree of this zero six something. Oopsies. This hash, right? And now it has changed. So this is our root tree, which we will see that we have a directory called blah. And because it has all the same files as the previous root tree, it now has this, the same hash. Yeah. So basically what I've shown you is that um, Git is really just a content tracker. It's a gigantic hash table. Yeah. Where does it store the path to the new files? Uh, path to the new files. Okay. So um, you see, right? In the head commit, we have this new tree, right over here, right? So this oops, this directory shows you that you have these four blobs as before, and you have one new item, the tree. This is your Subdirectory. You see here, it says a tree. And same as before. So that's how it stores the. Uh, yeah. Mm. So um, yeah, I wanted to cover some other things as well. Um, so over here, you. S oh, oops. Over here, I have a history that shows um, a merge commit, right? So 
if I take this and I examine it, you see that now I have multiple parents. And the order in which the, these parents appear is important because you can refer to them as did not, um, did show, head, um, whatever this thing is, one. And it shows this, the first parent, see? And same hash here. If I do two, it shows this, which is the second parent of head. Did log. Did log. Hmm? Yeah, so over here, this is basically your revision log, starting with the latest commit, which has two parents, one is here, one is here, and then these both have the same parent, which is this, and so on. Oh yeah. Resize my window smaller? Yeah, move the, move the right. To the right. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, um, oopsies. Um, yeah. One last thing. I'll just show you the first commit. This is the first commit. The difference between the first, the very first commit in your history, and your any other commit, is that it has no parent. See, it's just a tree. It has the same old metadata as before and has no parent. So when you do a git log, what happens is that git will look at your current branch, which is merged. It will look in .git slash ref slash hits slash merged, which is this commit over here. And then it will look at this commit it will show you this, has this, these two parents, and then it will just keep traversing down git cat dash p, this, and parent of this, and parent of this, all the way down until you have no more parents. Yeah, and that's your very first commit in history. So. I think that wraps up everything. Any questions? Yeah. So just now we say um, the the uh, we try to hash all of the metadata to give out the hash, right? Yes. So uh, maybe if you go inside and change the history of uh, maybe message of one comment, the Correct. hash will change as well. So Correct. That will, but could that cause any conflict to the other? Yes. Uh, that's why you have to be very careful when you're rewriting history. So the thing is, when you have a history, um, everybody believes that the history follows this path, right? Mm -hmm. But if, let's say, you do a rebase and then you re rewrite history so it follows a different path all the way down, then someone tries to merge your tree, everything goes wrong. That's why um, there's one rule that you, people usually follow during rebase. Uh, any history rewriting thing and that's uh, do not rewrite history that has been published anything that's still within your own system hasn't been published you can rewrite anything that you have shown the world stays like that yeah. and then secondly uh, since the parent is a hash mm -hmm. then, uh, meaning if you, if you want to let's say you have three comments yes. and all of them have, have uh, but we see like the link list and you can point from one commit yes. to another commit just, just by the, the parent function? Exactly, it's a linked list. I see. So this also brings another thing, right? So because the commit hash is hashed out of the contents of the entire <coughs> commit, right? This, this entire bit here. Therefore, all these have to remain constant in order for this hash to stay like as it is. Which means if I sign this commit with a tag. Ta uh, yeah, let me show you the git tag dash s. Um, version v1.0, okay? Yeah, version 1.0. Okay. 
So now I have a tag called v1.0 and a tag is a, an object of its own. You see here there's a lot more data. There is basically, um, actually I don't know what object this object is. Oh yeah, um, so a tag can point to a commit. It can point, actually it can point to any object. You can tag a file. You can tag a directory, which is a tree. And you can tag a submodule or whatever. Anything that has a hash can be tagged. So in this case, we have tagged a, the current uh, commit, which is this. And you see that the tagger has my name. There's, there's the tag name here. And this is the tag message. And right, this part is where, what's interesting. It's, this is what you call a PGP signature. Um, GPG, uh, PGP or B GPG is this uh, public key uh, encryption thing where you have a key pair. Uh, everyone has, will have a key pair, one public and one private. I keep my private key private and I give my public key to everybody. With my, public key, with my private key, I can sign messages and with my public key, you can verify that the message is signed by me. And if you tamper with it, the signature is broken. So by signing only the top commit, right? So this signature guarantees that this tag is correct. I mean, it, it means that I have certified that this tag is correct. And this tag refers to this commit. Uh, this commit, where, where is it? Good cap, P. It refers to this commit, which refers to everything. So by certifying only the topmost commit, I've certified the entire history saying that everything is valid because SHA-1 is still what you call a cryptographically secure hash. It is not currently possible to reverse it with any, within any reasonable time frame. And yeah, so that's good security in a nutshell. Okay, good. Can I use a 